Um, well, good afternoon. I hope you're not too sleepy after lunch. Uh, <laughs> so I'll try to make it quick for the actual interesting part. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, what you need to do as a module maintainer or as a custom module writer to port your JavaScript from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. Uh, so my name is Theodore Biadala. Uh, I go by Node on Drupal.org. I'm a JavaScript maintainer for Drupal Core. Um, so I've been f uh, maintainer for uh, a year and a half or something. Uh, I'm also a technical consultant with Acquia. So, you know, I'm not just in the core queue. I also uh, know and see what's happening uh, to project on a tight deadline and the kind of horrible thing that happens uh, during those times. Um, and just before we start, I just want to know a bit about uh, how familiar you are because that's a beginner session. So uh, who can write custom module here? That's great. Uh, who knows about render arrays? That's great. Uh, who knows about at attached? Yeah, well, <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, who knows about hook library? Yeah, a little bit less. Um, all right. Uh, so I will need 10 minutes of your time. Uh, just pay attention and then you can sleep. So the first thing you need to do uh, with your JavaScript, uh, your Drupal 7 JavaScript, is search and replace. So you need to search for drupal.settings and replace that by Drupal settings. So that's the global variable uh, that we use in Drupal 8. I'll go into the why afterwards, but for now just bear with me, search and replace. Second thing you need to search and replace is drupal.sim.prototype. Now it's just drupal.sim. Uh, so that might be a bit less common, uh, but still pretty common. Uh, a fairly uncommon one is when you implement custom <laughs> Ajax callback, uh, you need to implement a Drupal fun uh, JavaScript function, and usually it's under drupal.ajax.prototype.command, but now it's, it's under drupal.ajaxcommand.prototype. I mean, there are several reasons for that. If you want to know, I can go into it, but not for now. And for the JavaScript, that's all you need to do and your JavaScript will work on Drupal 8. Uh, but for the PHP, there's a few things that change. Uh, what we see usually in module is that you use Drupal at JS to put your script file on the page, or that you use the script um, uh, functionality of the info file. Uh, so this for Drupal 8, uh, don't do that, because that's going to be broken. And actually, right now in Drupal 8, you can't insert a JavaScript file from the info file anymore. We remove the functionality. So what do you, I mean, what can you use to do that? Uh, you need to use attached. So when, whenever you have uh, an element, a form element, uh, a render array that needs some JavaScript to work well, use attached uh, to insert the, the JavaScript file with it. Uh, <coughs> and then the hook library in Drupal 7 is renamed to hook library info. Uh, so for those who are not familiar with hook library, this is what it looks like. Uh, basically, it just says my script needs those other things to work. So first you have the my script, so that's the key you will be using to reference that uh, in other places of the code. So when you use attached, for example, then you say uh, my script is this file. Uh, it can be several files. Uh, you can have uh, CSS files as well. Uh, that depends, uh, that are included by your library. And then you have the dependencies. So this one, I'm going to go back to it afterwards. That's <coughs> very, very important. Uh, in Drupal 7, the libraries you can suppose are available on the page are jQuery, Drupal, Drupal settings, and jQuery.ones. So when you uh, declare your like uh, your library like that, it's just like it was in Drupal 7. Uh, now a bit more concrete example. <coughs> Let's say I have a page uh, that's a callback for some menu hook somewhere. Well, not a menu hook in Drupal 8, but well, you get what I mean. Uh, so that's in Drupal 7. I do Drupal .js, uh my module pass, script.js, and boom, my script is on the page. 
Uh, but that you shouldn't be doing anymore because that breaks several things. Uh, well, I can detail them if you want, but I'm not going uh, to go into details. Uh, what you need to do now is declare the my module library info uh, hook. Say, okay, my JavaScript file is uh, module pass script.js. Uh, my dependencies are jQuery, Drupal, Drupal setting, and jQuery.once. And then in the my page function, you, you will use attached with uh, library and the my module my script uh, thing. So it's, you know, nested arrays that very Drupal. Uh, <laughs> can't really go around that. Uh, is everything clear so far? All right, uh, now there's a patch to make this a bit more uh, user-friendly. Uh, because writing uh, PHP arrays, that's not very fun. We have YAML file, and if this patch gets in, you will be able to declare your libraries in a YAML file. Uh, so that's still science fiction for now, but hopefully that will be uh, you know, what will happen by the end of the week or two weeks maybe. Uh, I mean, if you want to fix that, uh, there's a sprint on Friday. So, um, so the YAML file would look like that. So you have the MyScript, then JavaScript, dependencies, same kind of thing. We remove one array for the dependencies because, you know, it's not really needed. We can just put a, a, a slash and work the same. And in the library attached uh, call, same thing, just put the, the slash and that will work. And you're done. <laughs> Your JavaScript work on Drupal 8. So, you know, we say Drupal 8 is a bit uh, scary, but not for JavaScript, uh, thankfully. Um, but why did we do all that? Because, I mean, that's three search and replace. You use attach, hook library info. It was available on Drupal 7, so why, you know, we enforce that now? Uh, because Drupal 7 has some problems. It's a bit ugly sometimes. Uh, the first problem is that when you download jQuery, you have uh, jQuery 1.4. That's uh, three years old. And since then, there's been a lot of performance improvement. We are jQuery 2.1 beta now. So, you know, lots of things happened. Um, you also have a critical bug on Drupal 7 that every single page Drupal serve is going to have jQuery and Drupal.js, and you can't remove them. Uh, so even if your page has no JavaScript in it, it will load those files. Um, and that's because we assume every page needs that, and that's not the case. Uh, another problem is that the core JS breaks pretty easily. Uh, so for example, when you use jQuery update, they have to do some workarounds to not break uh, uh, the core JavaScript. Uh, also, the client validation module like extends some prototype somewhere and breaks core JavaScript. Uh, so that's not very good <laughs> because <laughs> makes life harder for Contrib. And also one of my problem and the whole reason why I started to get uh, involved in Drupal core is that the Contrib JavaScript is not great. Uh, it's, well, you could say it's pretty bad actually. Uh, I started contributing to mapping modules, like the open layer modules, and the way uh, they do things, it was very similar to what Drupal core was doing. Then I found some problem in C-tools JavaScript, and I was like, well, wait, that's, you know, copy-pasted from core. So I thought, well, if I want to fix core, I need, uh, well, if I want to fix contrib, I need to fix core first. And that's what uh, we've been doing the past year and a half. Uh, so now, you know, how can we address that? Because fixing contrib, that's a pretty big task, and I can't do that by myself. Uh, so we have some solution uh, for Drupal 8. And uh, the first one, it relates to the outdated version of jQuery. That's every single library we introduced in Drupal core is going to be updated through the release. So, uh, if there's a new jQuery version going out, we're going to update that. It's not so scary as it was before because now jQuery is pretty stable. Like they have this whole 1.9, 2.0 uh, API compatibility thing, so they can't really break much. Uh, so that's good for us. Um, and I mean, I'm going 
I'm going to list like the big libraries we introduced as well, and all of them will have uh, updates through the eight uh, release. Uh, then another big uh, and important thing is that you need to declare all your dependencies. So that's why we require you to use the hook library info. And I mean, that's so important, I'm going to make it bold. So you know, that's how important that is. And uh, you won't be able to use Drupal at JS anymore. Uh, it's, going to be, it's already a deprecated function, and right now as we speak, someone is writing the replacement for that. Uh, like next, next door, actually. Uh, yeah, see? <laughs> um, uh, and once you declare all your dependencies as well, uh, Drupal core can do optimization that it wasn't able to do before. Uh, uh, dependencies, you know, that's a graph, and we don't really have now a dependency graph, but we are working on it. And once we have this graph, we can do uh, very neat stuff uh, to optimize the aggregation, to optimize the loading. And actually, uh, in the course of making the patch for Drupal core, we were able to load everything through require.js and AMD. So all core JavaScript was uh, IMD modules that we would, we would load through require.js. And uh, because you declare your dependency, we will be able to do that in Contrib. So stuff like uh, lab.js or head.js, those kind of uh, script loaders will have a much easier time uh, doing that job in Drupal 8. And well, if you have questions in the middle, just stop me and raise your hand. Um, then we have the strict mode and JS hint. Uh, so the strict mode is going to be used because we don't like global variable, and we want you to declare all your vari variable that you use. Um, and if you don't do that, strict mode will just crash. So that was great to debug core JavaScript, and I'm hoping Contrib will do that as well. So you know, you can just search and replace three stuff in your uh, JavaScript file, but if you want to do it properly, but it should embrace the whole new way of writing JavaScript we have. Uh, so strict mode uh, going through JS hint validation. So who doesn't know what JS hint is? Okay, a few of you. Uh, <coughs> so JS hint, that's a command line tool that will look at your JavaScript files and tell you that uh, a few things are wrong. For example, if you use uh, just two equal in your comparison, instead of three, it will say, okay, that's an error, you need to fix it. And there are several options that we use in Drupal core that I'm hoping Contrib will uh, use as well. Because uh, through the JS hint validation, we found bugs in Drupal core. So you know that's not just fancy and because we can do it, it's just, it's really, really important. Uh, and to fix uh, Contrib as well, we're working on coding standards we have a few new ways of, uh, of doing uh, uh, kind of more abstracted programming through backbone and this kind of thing. So we're documenting that and hopefully that will go out uh, in a few weeks, uh, like the new documentation that Contrib can follow without you know, shooting themselves in the foot. <coughs> so you know that was kind of the tool, the process, but for you as a Contrib developer, what's new that you can use uh, well today or tomorrow? First, we have new libraries. All those things are in core. They are going to get updated so you can rely on it and uh, just declare like underscore or backbone as a dependency. Uh, so who knows what jQuery2 means? Who knows, yeah? Without, yeah, without I, 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 yeah, yeah. So jQuery 2 doesn't work on IE8, but I will go back to that later. Um, and that's a really important point. Took months to, <laughs> to get that in. Uh, so you have jQuery 2, you have underscore, that's a utility library, uh, kind of provide neat function for manipulating arrays, objects, and doing some uh, templating as well, but we don't use that, but you can if you want. Uh, we have Backbone that's used to structure your, your code because, I mean, jQuery is just a dumb utility library. 
It doesn't give you any structure, and you're left on your own uh, to organize your code. Backbone kind of uh, being the MVC model to JavaScript, whatever MVC means. Uh, we have modernizer and core because we have a few polyfields uh, that we need to run. It's a custom build. It's pretty small, so it's not the whole, the whole thing. Um, we have CK editor. So who doesn't know we have WYSIWYG in Drupal 8? That's good. Uh, and that's CK editor. So you can write CK editor plugins. There's an API in Drupal to, for you to provide it from your module to the CK editor configuration. And we also have Joyride. Uh, who doesn't know about the tour module? Uh, you all know about the inline documentation and everything? No, okay, so, <laughs> um, so views is pretty complicated, right? So there's a doc when you end up on a views page, like on the view edit page with the three columns, you have a button on the toolbar at the top right that say tour. When you click on that, you get little pop-ins on the page that say this element, this link is used for this kind of stuff. And then you can go through the whole page uh, and you know read what links, what the links uh, you can click on actually do. Uh, so it's like inline documentation, basically. That's really neat. Uh, so if you want to provide documentation for your module, you can just rely on that, and that's going to be easy. Uh, I mean, there are maybe a few other uh, more minor library, but you know that's really the important ones. Uh, we have a couple new APIs as well. Uh, for example, we have Drupal.anons. <coughs> this was this one is for screen readers. Uh, that's used extensively by the new toolbar to provide uh, information about what's happening with the toolbar state to screen readers. So if you want to make your script accessible and you know don't lose your uh, <laughs> your blind user, you should be using that. And it doesn't show anything on the page, but screen readers will pick it up. Uh, then you have something Drupal displays. That's uh, that's a little tool to say so how much. Uh, the toolbar takes uh, as a sp how much space does the toolbar take at the top of the page, and these kind of things. Uh, <coughs> well, probably not many people will use it, but that's available. Then Drupal debounce it's the same as a underscore debounce function. So if you have a scroll event, for example, and you have a pretty heavy computation to do during your scroll event, you don't want to run it all the time. You want to run it once every, I don't know, 200 milliseconds, for example. So you can use debounce to do that. It will wait 200 milliseconds, and then run your function, wait again, so you don't kill the performance of your uh, event. And maybe the most uh, useful one for contrib is going to be Drupal.dialog. Uh, this one is using, for now, jQuery UI uh, dialogs to provide the functionality. So you can op open pops in and, and these kind of things. Uh, and actually, if you want to just open a link in a model, there's just a data attribute to add to your link, and it will work. So uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, uh, the API <laughs> for Drupal.dialog, it's uh, very heavily inspired by the HTML5 dialog specification. No browser implements it right now, but you know, once, once they do, we can remove the polyfill, but I don't know, maybe 10 years because of IE, hopefully. <laughs> um, and there's a bunch of other minor APIs that, uh, that are going to be much more specific, so, you know, beginner session, not going to go into that. Uh, but if you want, we can talk about it afterwards. Uh, we have a few new features as well. Uh, so we have responsive table that's integrated to views. So you can say, on narrow screen, I don't want to show this column because that's not really important. So you know your table will fit on mobile. Uh, we need that because the administrative UI uses a lot of tables. Uh, so to make that readable, we need to have that. Uh, then for front-end performance on mobile, we have responsive image. Narrow screen, don't load a big image. And that's the picture module. That's in, that's in core, so you can just activate that. 
and you won't kill the data plan of your users. Uh, we also have quick edits, uh, which used to be called in-place editing, or yeah, called a few things. Uh, that's pretty fun. Uh, you can extend it. It's a bit hard, but you know it's possible. And uh, you know many more uh, features that you probably seen in Drizzt Keynote uh, on Tuesday. So back to jQuery 2. So that means i8 doesn't work uh, if you try to you know, go on the Drupal 8 website. Um, it took a long time uh, to, to get accepted. Uh, and the, the reason why, I guess there's a great quote by Cash saying that uh, we could look stupid by uh, removing i8 support now or look stupid when we still support i8 in 10 years. So <laughs> I guess uh, being stupid now is better. Um, but I mean, that's really important to me because that means any bug failed to contrib uh, because it doesn't work on i8, the maintainer can say, well, I don't care. Drupal 8 doesn't support i8, so I don't need to care about your patch or well, your problem. If, if you send a patch, why not? Uh, uh, but that means also that you can use new features of the JavaScript language that, is, that are not available in i8, uh, like the native for each function, the native bind function, these kind of things. Go ahead, go crazy, you can do that. Uh, but then, uh, in core, we have uh, Droplet, a very good developer, JavaScript developer, and he's in China. And all his clients are, you know, in China. And they use i6. I8 at best, and he's like, well, I can't use I Drupal 8 with them, so I'm stuck with Drupal 7 and the overlay. So uh, there's a I8 project now. <laughs> and this project is, uh, the aim is to support at least the administrative interface on I8, uh, so that people can actually use it uh, with their clients. Um, so, Right now, the only thing it does, it changed the jQuery 1.9, uh, jQuery 2 to jQuery 1.9, uh, adds a few polyfills here and there for native JavaScript function like for each and uh, bind, but that's it. Uh, we're still waiting to see, well, who is going to want a yet support for Drupal 8, and hopefully they will send patch, but <laughs> we know how that works. Um, and now everyone is happy, everyone is happy. And I got way faster than I expected, so <laughs> uh, that's pretty much, uh, wait, I got one. Yeah, the sprint on Friday. Uh, so if you want to fix, uh, if you want to know more about how the new aggregation works, how, uh, uh, how we can use the graph, uh, dependency graph that we're building, uh, how to port weird use case that you might have as uh, maintainers, uh, come by on Friday, I'll be there, so you can ask me questions or throw eggs at me because you don't like the new names of the JavaScript functions. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, I guess that's basically it. That's weird. <laughs> So what I'm hoping now is that you have questions uh, because, you know, I, I went through pretty fast and there's a lot more stuff underneath. And <laughs> uh, yeah, and the Microsoft uh, uh, booth has IE, IE uh, stickers, so you can, <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Um, <laughs> So if you have any use case or something that you say, wait, I don't know how I can solve that in Drupal 8, uh, feel free to ask. Yeah? Are there any plans for keeping libraries more up to date in Drupal 8 so we don't end up with three old versions of code for a new code? Uh, yes, yeah, so are there any plans to uh, get the library, to keep the library up to date in Drupal core? So there's a plan to do that because, uh, well, I said we were going to update the library throughout the eight release. So if jQuery 2.1 uh, gets out, we're going to ship that. Um, so there's an agreement on the strategy around that, but there's no code to back it up. 
the strategy goes like um, when you declare your dependency, you say you depend on a certain version, or like uh, this version or above uh, of the library. And then it gets a bit tricky because if you have several scripts that require different versions of the same library, well, the idea is that you won't load uh, the older ones. You just, you know, will forget about them. But uh, since the library we have in core are jQuery, Backbone, Underscore, they don't really break their API very much now. Uh, so I'm hoping it's not going to, to be too painful. And well, since the beginning, I was planning on going through the bigger country modules and pretty much fixing the JavaScript uh, if an update breaks it. Uh, well, at least the big ones. So I guess that's, uh, that's the idea, but as I said, no code to back it up. Uh, if you have a better idea, feel free to go in the issue queue and submit them because, you know, <laughs> it's still open. There's no code. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Drupal behaviors are still the same. Uh, the Ajax framework, unfortunately, is still the same. Uh, if I didn't put it on the slide, it didn't change, basically. The, uh, I, I guess the only change about behavior is that if your behavior crash, it won't crash the rest of the behaviors. So it's, it's a bit more safe now to, to run weird behaviors. Um, so now just a little bit of your page is broken, not the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so uh, was it module or theme? A theme. So for a theme, you, it's still possible to have script in the info file, uh, but we're going to change that because if you do that, there's no dependency uh, implied. Uh, because if you, don't, if you put a script in the hook library and you don't say it requires jQuery, jQuery will not be loaded. So if your script is alone on the page, it will crash. Uh, you can use the hook library info inside your template.php. That's why I'm hoping we get to the YAML file because Simmer will have an easier time writing YAML than PHP arrays. Uh, but you know, that's still a patch in process. So yeah, even for theme, hook library. And then use attached. Uh, there's a couple of examples inside core uh, that do that. For example, Bartik, you can look into it. There's a hook to alter the page uh, render array and add the attached uh, for your library. I don't remember exactly the name, so I won't try to give it, but look in Bartik template.php, you will find how to do it. Yeah? I have two questions, actually. One yeah. is, why Backbone JS was chosen for the Drupal core framework? Yeah. And second one, what I need to do if I want AngularJS on my Drupal page? Yeah, so uh, first question about why Backbone? Uh, so it comes from the inline editing stuff. Uh, inline editing, at the beginning, we were using CreateJS, which is a library written to, do, to provide this kind of inline editing functionality uh, in an interoperable way. So Typo3 is using it, we were using it, uh, other CMSs use, uses it. Uh, and that was using Backbone. So like, well, we have Backbone in core, and it was at the same time the toolbar got refactored, and toolbar used, it, used that as well. Uh, then we took CreateJS out of Drupal core because it wasn't uh, fitting our new uh, use cases, but we kept uh, the Backbone toolbar. And then the new edit-in-place code was written on top of Backbone because it was just I mean, that's pretty, a pretty complicated uh, script, so it's easier if it's uh, well architectured, and Backbone was helping for that. So that's the only reason why we have Backbone. Uh, we could have gone with something else, but you know, Backbone is stable enough, it's well known, uh, so why not? And I mean, doing a comparison with all the other libraries out there, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's a lot of work. Uh, I mean, even for CK Editor, uh, that took months to decide on CK Editor. So 
I, I don't want to, to think about how long it would have taken for that. Uh, second case, question about AngularJS. Uh, well, you can just declare it in a hook, info, uh, hook library info file, no, hook library info uh, function, and uh, use that on your page, or declare that at the dependency of the script, and that's it. But then you would need to do the integration with the Ajax API and these kind of things. We, we, there's no pre-made way to help with that yet. Uh, well, I was super clear or <laughs> you're super bored. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, why underscore and not Lodash? <laughs> so why underscore and not Lodash? Because, uh, <laughs> Uh, because we don't want problems. <laughs> no, because uh, it, it's just easier. And actually, because we declare libraries and their dependencies, uh, at some point we will be able to say, I'm going to use Lodash and replace all of underscore with my custom Lodash build. So you still have the hook library alter, hook library JS alter or something, uh, to change the dependencies uh, in the different uh, modules and scripts. So you can replace underscore with Lodash. But then you know, underscore one big file, Lodash, you need the build system, and we're not very good at build in, uh, well, at least in, on the front end with Drupal yet. I mean, we still don't have a way to minify everything at once. Right? And that's a problem. Well, first step is use uh, JS hint because that will cover a lot of things. Uh, there are many, many things that will be fixed just by following what uh, JS hint tells you. Uh, and then if you want to go beyond that, uh, it's more about the structure of your program. And since you know we're using Backbone, but then we have several uh, slightly different ways of using it in different places of core yet. Um, I mean, we don't have like a uh, perfect solution to give out. Uh, so at least fixing JSON stuff will take a bit of time already. And uh, if you have problem with the structure, uh, I guess reading up on frameworks will help. But yeah, that's that's that can be a lot of work. Uh, all right, see if you don't have any more questions, I guess we can wrap up and have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> well, if, if you can use the time to go in a sprint and, you know, sprint on JavaScript stuff, that would be helpful as well, but, you know. <laughs>